Hey, hey! How's it going, folks? Greetings from the windy, windy hill of beans. It's been a while. I haven't been up here in like two weeks. I've been too busy. And that's partly what I want to talk about, why I've been so busy. It's been an amazing week, really. And I want to talk a little bit about my mental health during that week because it's it's quite interesting, I think. It was full on, we had three trips to the mainland. I had a whole weekend of hiking and basically not a minute to myself. Now, when I sit down in the mornings and I do my my daily tracking, one of the things it asks me is to write down three things for which I'm grateful. And honestly, most days, the first thing I write down is being at home. Because I love being at home, it's the best thing ever. So when my week is full like that, it feels like it's overwhelming, you know. Now, none of the things I was going to do were things I didn't want to do, they were all fun things. You know, going to concerts or I took my daughter to Oban for the day so she could visit the orthodontist, which meant sitting in the car with her for five hours, something like that. Getting to spend that time with my daughter is super precious. In fact, we had the best time. Listen to music in the car. The scenery on the drive back from Oban to Glasgow was just beautiful. Along the side of Loch Awe, then Loch Lomond. You know, it was brilliant. And then I got to catch up with a friend in Ardrossan, whom I hadn't seen or spent any time with for years. But still, I had that feeling of not having any time to to recharge, I think is probably the best word for it. Chloe's a bit slow today, isn't she? And then came the weekend. It was the Arran Mountain Festival, which I signed up for as soon as it was available. This is my second year. And this year they were doing the Akia Ridge, which I've never done before and never would on my own. There's just absolutely no way. It's the most technically challenging ridge on Arran. In fact, the instructor said it was, it's one of the most technically challenging ridges in the country.
lip on if you want this back down. Done. So yeah, there's just no way I would have done it. So when I saw they were doing it, I was like, right, I'm signing up for that. And then the following day, they were doing consolidation of Map and Compass, which I did the introduction to that last year. And I want to build up my skills with Map and Compass. So I signed up for that. It's going to be, that one's 100 metres, so, where are we? Oh, there we are. So, it's, mm, if, we're, if we're in the middle of that wiggly line, then it's 150 metres, isn't it? And it's 150 metres. In that direction. On a bearing of 328. And you know how it is, that funny thing when you've got ages before a thing, someone says, can you do that thing in six months time? You're like, oh God, I no bother, that's ages away. And then like the week before it, you're like, oh, I've got that thing. Why did I say I would do that? It was a wee bit like that. And having back to back hiking days, particularly, <laughs> when the first one of them is the Akira Ridge. You know, it's pretty challenging. So when I got home, I got home Friday, after all my gallivanting, I was like, I might just not do this. You know, I was just, I was burnt out on, on me time. I hadn't had enough recharging time, decompression time. And it, it was just, it was tiring. But I had committed to the thing, so I was like, right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And you know what? It was one of the best things I've ever done. It's certainly one of the most challenging things I've ever done. Turned up there at 8, 4, no, 7.45, Glen Rosa. 7.45 in the morning. Headed up Glen Rosa. Took a left at the fork, at the burn to the top of the ridge that goes between Kirvor and Akia and then we got harnessed up, helmets on and off we went. Now I don't know if most of you probably won't know this but when I was 17 I had a big fall, I fell off a cliff in the Lake District when I was in the army, smashed up my leg, nearly lost my leg, ended up with multiple surgeries, many years of rehabilitation and I still have issues now, you know, badly scarred, fused ankle, my foot's in a pretty bad shape, it's, it's not pretty. So going up to a ridge like that is, it's facing my fears, you know, and that's really why I wanted to do it, to see if I could, knowing that First of all, I was in safe hands. We had three instructors with us, two of them mountain trained, I think, like qualified, certified mountain leaders. And uh, a third, a third instructor who was backup, I think you would call him. And they were all fantastic. Super, super experienced. Knew the route outside in and had the most amazing sense of humor which helps in a massive way when you're doing a challenge like that. So there are three instructors, five participants. So it was almost one to one. And uh, the way these guys made us feel safe and give us confidence was just incredible. Yeah, there's this one bit called the Move Pa or the Bad Step, where you're basically on a little rock bridge of about a meter with a, a gap that you have to cross and on either side it's just a sheer drop. It's, it's very eerie and very scary. And you know that bit there where I was a wee bit fear, you know I'm not going to deny it. 
the instructor talk me over it in a really nice way and he, he ended up counting like one two three go and then I just went and I was over the thing it was amazing and there were bits where my feet were slipping couldn't get a purchase because you know, there was real scrambling hands on stuff climbing up granite faces lodging your feet into cracks stuff like that and we had had some rain so was, there were bits that were wet and my boots are not they're not uh, B2s or anything like that I mean the grip's no bad if it's dry but on the wet I was struggling in a few places to get to get purchase on the rock and you know get up but I did I made it and boy oh boy what a feeling so I will drop in some some little clips and you can have a look at what like it was uh, good how do you get that? <laughs> he pulls me up at the end which is <laughs> all good it's all good oh it's just stars it's just there's nothing it's there's nothing to grab onto so a little bit of rock like that it's it's such a rock. yeah Ali Which one of us is the rugged rascal? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So I did that. We got to the end and then it was a nice chilled walk back down a, a route that I know very well, a route that I've done a few times. So I knew where I was and I had achieved the summit of Akia. What a thing, and that's something no one can take away. I don't think I'll do it again. I think it was one of those things that I just wanted to know that I could do it. And I did it, so go me. <laughs> and then next day we had the map and compass, which was, you know, it was fairly straightforward. Walk from Catacol across the hills down to the distillery in Loch Ranza. Uh, you know, map reading all the way, navigating to different lochins on the OS map, using our compasses and getting bearings and all that. It was, it was really good. My legs soon loosened up. Well, I was quite stiff on the upper body as well, because my upper strength is not, you know, it's not particularly good. Even though I've been practicing, well not practicing, I've been coming up here a lot, most days, and going up, I've done two big hikes this year as well. So my, my leg fitness is, is probably as good as it's, it's been in years. Upper body though, you know, because you are actually having to pull your body weight up onto ledges and mantles and shelves, which I was not used to, so. Yeah, it was stiff on Sunday, I'm not going to lie. I think the hardest bit, besides the Mauve Pa and the bicycle step, is when I got home, got home about eight, and had to feed myself and then get my bag ready to go out the next morning. That was tough, because I was up again early the next morning to get out for the next the next day's hiking and there was a moment when I was like maybe I'll just phone somebody and cancel but I didn't and you know one of the most amazing things about the whole week was that I'm part of a mastermind group right a bunch of creators who make YouTube videos that we all met doing Ali Abdel's part-time YouTuber Academy and we've started this small mastermind group to keep each other going, to encourage each other, to set goals, etc. And my goal was after my wife's birthday, which was May the 4th, 
to go back on low carbs because my diet was one of the big things that I actually was failing at really hard. I tend to turn to food now that I'm, you know, I'm still an alcoholic. I don't drink, I don't take drugs. So my self-sabotage thing of choice is sugar. And it was getting me down, so I didn't set a YouTube goal, I didn't set a productivity goal. I set, what will I call it, a mindset goal? I don't want to call it a diet goal because I don't like that word. I'd rather call it a mindset goal, which was to go low carbs after my wife's birthday because I thought I would be having birthday cake on my wife's birthday. Then go on the diet, then go on the, the low carbs mindset until the next meeting, which is Monday coming then realised that not only did I have the mountain festival where normally I would take pork pies, scotch eggs, sandwiches, sweets, biscuits, not only did I have that, I also had three trips to the mainland where it's very hard, particularly if you're eating out, to stay on low carbs. But I did it. I only did it. I only bloody well did it. So that was amazing. I can't believe I got through that week. Which I was referring to in conversations with my wife as the week of death. Even though all the things, as I've said, were, were fun things. I got through the whole thing. And got to check each day the little box that says keto on my daily tracker. So I know, right? I'm as surprised as anyone. But I think that means now that I can, I can believe in myself. I have now the faith that I can do this. I don't need to self-harm with sugar. And so, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that, I have to say. So, looking back at that week, although I was dreading it going into it for the simple fact that it was going to be away from my comfort zone for such a, an extended period of time it now feels like an incredible achievement doing the ridge number one staying on the low carbs number two got to spend two whole days with my daughter amazing number three and i got to i don't know i got to understand that committing to things that you want to do. You know, it seems easy sometimes, the commitment part, but in carrying out the commitment, that can be hard. But now I've just had an example of how, how rewarding that is, you know, doing the thing you committed to do. So yeah, all good, man, all good. So that's me. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.